Hello everyone, I'm Bill Harris and this is Life Questions, a program that looks at life's many issues from a biblical perspective rather than a world view. And speaking of the world view, there is much to talk about today. It's always interesting to view current events knowing that God's word is so relevant in these troublesome times. Several local ministers are joining with, with their insights today, and I'd like for you to meet them. They have answers to the questions that you have been sending us. First on our list, we have Pastor Dave Burkhardt of Westminster Methodist Church, United Methodist. And then we have uh, Chris Ewing, who is pastor of County Line Church of the Brethren, followed by Pastor Rick Lamb of Hume United Methodist Church. And rounding our panel, John Berger, who is pastor of Transform Church here in Lima. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us today. Good to be here. Yeah. All right. All right. Listen, we've got so many good questions, and we've been, of course, rehearsing and reviewing them to take a look, and you all have had a chance to see them even before coming here. I think one of the main ones we're getting that I think we ought to lead with today is the question of anger, because there's so much of it in our society, wouldn't you say? The question simply asks, how can I prevent myself from being angry? Now, I don't know if that person is saying there's so much going on in the world that's causing me to be angry, or maybe there's so much going on in his home or her home, where it is, but there is anger aplenty to go around. What sayest thou, gentlemen? <laughs> Well, this was one of my big issues before I became a pastor, actually before I became a Christian. It was? Oh, it was, I was, I was terrible. Uh, and um, when I finally came to the Lord and, and experienced the love that God has to give to us, uh, those anger issues really subsided. And, um, and it was an, an amazing kind of trans, transformation for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I think that if I were to give some advice to this person, I would definitely say, um, seek the Lord with all your heart um, and, and just let God's peace really cover you because that's really where it's, where it's at. That's what helped me so much. So. And I can see though, where somebody would say, well, you're giving me a highfalutin spiritual answer. Now I'm, I'm deeply angry at the things that are going on. How, what's that going to do for my anger? Um, I'll tell you what, it's really amazing, or it was for me anyway, uh, the transformation that takes place uh, because, because I used to be that guy that was shaking my fist at other drivers and, and um, now I look at him and I say, oh my goodness, you know, I used to be like that. And, uh, and so I just thank you, Lord, for taking that away from me. Yeah. And, and, and it he was, will do it. He, he will. will do it. He will. So if we seek after him with all our heart, that's, that's the key of it all. Yep. So. Well, go ahead, Pastor Ewing. One thing that I always say to our, my congregation is, is, and this is with any emotion, is, is that emotions were meant not to dictate your life, but to enhance your life and your relationships around. And anger is, and is an emotion too. And so if you're angry, there's different types of anger. There's the angers that consumes you and that you focus on all the time. And we want to make sure that we hand those over to the Lord so that they don't just consume us and, and really cause even physical damage to our bodies. But then there's other angers that it's okay to be angry about. Um, different situations going on in our culture. Um, there's a lot of people angry about abortion. You know, there's a lot of, uh, we get angry at our, our children, if you have children, when they do something wrong. Um, now we shouldn't act out in our anger and sin because, you know, scripture says do not sin within your anger, but it's okay if that anger motivates you because there are things that are good and evil that we should be angry over the evil things when things are happening. But if it's a consuming your life, like in your situation, mm -hmm. yes, we need to hand it over to the Lord. We need to, you know, give it to him. But if it's just situations that you're finding yourself anger, then you should ask the Lord um, to use it to motivate you to do what is right and to stand up for what is just, um, whether it be in your personal life or in your, your church or in your community, um, and then those kind of things, and then find the solution, the path that God has for you, because God gave you that anger. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be quick to anger. We should be slow to anger. Um, so if it's quick angry, then you need to kind of do a introspection and um, have a conversation with the Lord and, or even um, an accountability partner, whether if you're married, a spouse, you know, to share those things because you shouldn't bear those things alone. And God gives us people to help well, us. Well, in fact, uh, Dana Gresh on the Nancy Lee DeMoss show radio program, uh, and they, uh, they type it all out so you have the transcript and everything, but on her program uh, last week or a week before, uh, she was talking about how the Navy SEALs mm. will 
when they get angry, they need to act without the anger right. and because they could do serious damage. And so they, uh, they have a counting process where they hold their breath and they count, you know, and I, I don't remember exactly how it was, but, but so they count one to four and then if there's still that raging anger, they do it again and again until they're able to bring it under control so that then they can react without the anger being an issue. Yeah. Right, because we don't want anger to control us. That's right. It, we are to control all of our emotions. Yeah. It's interesting, they only have to count the one to four. Right? Well, <laughs> but they have to repeat it sometimes, yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know, I, to me, one of the psychological barometers of anger in this country, gentlemen, is the rise in uh, anger involving guns, shooting of guns. Now, I'm not trying to get us to be political about it. If you want to be, go right ahead. But <laughs> <laughs> in any event, uh, th that's one of the measurements of anger in this country is gun violence. Yeah. So how do we deal with that? You certainly ought to cop to more than four if you're going to be thinking about shooting somebody. Yeah, right. that's just, that's beyond. Uh... What is that saying? What's going on in this country that's making for the rise in gun violence? Well, I, I think it goes deeper than that. I think it goes uh, to, to the deep divide that this nation's in. And it seems like, like there are so many forces that are pulling us apart. Um, there's a media that um, has to create a constant narrative of, of separation in this world. And, and we see it in, in politics where we, we see Democrats and Republicans that are arguing with one another. And, and um, you know, we see people saying that we need to get in somebody's face, and this is coming from, you know, Capitol Hill. And when we hear that, um, it, it gives people a, a real sense of, well, if they can do it, I can do it too. And and I just, I hate to see that. We're supposed to be sharing love in this world. Yeah, what what and, are you saying in your pulpit then about this? What are you, what are you telling folks? Um, well, I, I teach from the scriptures, and so uh, continually uh, share God's word with with folks about um, how we're to continue to love. And sometimes, right. sometimes love looks confrontational. Uh, it has to be. It can be. Um, you know, when we confront sin, we have to confront it, uh, not in anger, but it, it may look like that to some people in Tough the world. Tough love. Yeah. Tough. Right. Yeah. 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 Certainly. I, I heard somebody say um, recently that. As Christians, we are challenged to speak truth, whether it is hurtful or not. I mean, truth is truth. It's not relative. It is truth. And so, you know, with all this anger, you know, you talk about gun violence, violence in general, you know, I would sit there and say we have an issue of sanctity of life issue, not necessarily a gun violence or any violence issue. I mean, we just don't treat each other with the love even from a challenging aspect even as you know if we are all believers we're all pastors we should be able to come to each other and say hey listen let's have a good debate let's let's i don't i want to know what you're thinking from this passage and why you're saying this because i don't agree with you and to have a conversation where it is it, it might look like to the outside world where we're angry at each other but really it's just a strong debate and we're going to walk out and we're going to have a coffee or uh, i don't drink coffee so not coffee but you know <laughs> we're, we're going to go and, and have a meal together and be friends Mm -hmm. And we've lost that ability to do that on so many different levels, you know, and so thinking that, hey, like I want to if you can if you can prove me wrong through especially with scripture, I, I want to be proven wrong. Yeah. You know, because that means I've got a lot of growing to do mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but prove me wrong. And that's what I've told many people, even in my congregation, that have said, hey, I don't agree with you. And then fine, let's sit down and let's have a conversation yeah. because yeah. I've studied this and, and I want to know. If you studied it more than I have and you came to a different conclusion, I want to know it. Yeah. But if we're not willing to have those conversations about anything, not just about scripture, mm -hmm. then and, and, and to come away friends, then yeah, we're going to see the violence. We're going to see the discord. We're going to see all these issues. You know, I saw just recently, um a statistic, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it said that domestic violence began to rise as people were pinned into their homes because of the pandemic. And just husbands and wives that just don't relate that well together. I mean, when they're going to work separately, I guess they can get along better. But the rise in domestic violence was there while we were all strapped inside of our homes. What does that say? Well, and I think he brought up a good impo important uh, um, idea in that, you know, we are in the image of God. 
And because we don't recognize the image of God in each one of us, then uh, we, we, we don't respect that and we don't honor that. And so, and so, like you were saying, that abortion, it's okay because we don't know that person yet. But God knows that person. And, and domestic mm-hmm. violence, mm-hmm. you know, we're supposed to, and in fact, the, the wife is supposed to be someone that, and not that the wife is the only one being, you know, violently abused, abused mm-hmm. but, um, but usually that's the case. And, and, uh, and the wife is supposed to be the, the best counsel, the person that we rely on as a man uh, to know, you know, we consult with one another and we interact with one another. We work with one another to raise this family and to uh, work through the home and all of that. And so, and so when you're violent with the, the best counselor that God has given you, you know, what is that? Mm-hmm. You know, so... I think a lot of it has to do with our lack of communication skills anymore. And, and I blame some of that on social media. Um, we've lost the ability to confront one another face to face about anything and not, um, not do it in a non hurtful way. So and thinking that your opinion matters. Yeah. I mean, I had a professor, which I thought well, it took me a while to understand it. <clears throat> but when I was in my undergrad, you know, we were not allowed to put our opinion into a paper. And he said that, you have not earned the right to have an opinion yet. Mm. And that is really like, you think of like all the going into your doctorate and stuff, you've got years of years and years of study and, and being critiqued and, and iron sharpened iron and debate going into all your stuff mm-hmm. that your opinion then is, is, you know, defined But social media. You can just put anything you want up there and all of a sudden, well, that's truth. And it's like, well, wait a minute. What, like, what makes you an expert? Yeah. Pastor Berger, you haven't had anything to say yet. Are you, are you seething with anger or silent anger? Or what, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wanted to go back to just what kidding, you had said kidding. earlier. You know, how does, what is the practical outworking of, of what you had both said? And I would say this, a, a person who is in a situation where immediately their blood begins to boil, they feel their blood pressure rising, it's, they're in that moment, that is when you cry out to the one who can give you the help. And you say, Lord, help me. I, I, I see this coming. I, I'm seeing red. I need you to help me right now. But I think not only that, but we should also pray for the fruit of the spirit that we need. You mentioned self-control earlier too. Mm-hmm. That's what well, I'm so frustrated. I feel like I could throw something. Lord, help me to not be angry and then give me the corresponding fruit of your spirit yeah. to, to help me to love the person or to have mm-hmm. the self-control or whatever it is that I need. I, I think that's what's missing and regarding all the other stuff. I don't think we're going to find the answer in Washington, D.C. I don't think we're going to find the answer on social media. I think we're going to find the answer in Jesus. It's Mm -hmm. it's just surrendering whatever it is to him that is in our lives. And and, and all of this other stuff, uh, sanctity of life issues, uh, drug addiction, uh, marital discord, it all comes down or back to the lostness and the self-centeredness of humanity. Well, let's put those nine foods on, on the table. Now, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance or self-control. Um, if we just work among those in terms of a possible solution to the problem, uh, what would you advise somebody if they came to you for counsel and said that they're just so angry they're going to do something terrible? What, how, how could you use those, any of those gifts, I guess, depending on the situation, you pull out any of those nine fruits of the Spirit to use those uh, to counsel somebody? I think the first thing you want to do is identify the, the root of the right. anger. Anger is the, the symptom. What is the, what is the root? What is causing the that? Are you spending that. all your time watching you know, cable network news and, and, <laughs> right? and, and you're just seething over what's happening in the world? Or are you spending all your time on social media and, you know, whatever the case may be. Arguing so, with people. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So, you know, over this, that, and the other. And there's, there are plenty of things to argue about <laughs> in this world anymore. So, you know, what is the root of the issue? And I think that needs to be identified first before you can uh, yeah. go from there. And- let, let's pause for a break. But I can tell that on this subject, we really need to get more into some of the solutions again uh, We'll be right back right after this, and we're going to come back to deal more with anger right after this. So 
don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back with our discussion on anger. Quickly, gentlemen, I'd like to turn to politics. There is a lot of anger among lay people that Congress in, uh, in the legislature, uh, that in the White House, and in the Supreme Court, that sometimes nothing gets done. You know, and, 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 and people become angry about that. And then when you're dealing with each of those three branches of government, there's anger being displayed among those that are in, in those branches of government. And that, that is a part of the delay of moving this country forward, is that the anger is not only out in general society, it's right there in the White House, it's, 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 it's there in Congress, you probably don't see it as much in the Supreme Court. That tends to be a very closed, sheltered type environment, but uh, I'll bet you there's, well, look at the vote, you'll see when you, the <laughs> votes come out, you see it. What would you say to the three branches of government if you had them locked in a room with you and as a minister of the gospel, you wanted to pursue conversation with them on helping this nation to move forward, knowing that much of what needs to be done is in their hands too. What would you say to them? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Fired. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, uh, and it doesn't necessarily go to anger, but, but they are servants. Right. Not only are they servants of the people, but, uh, you know, we see time and again how God has put up one and put down another. So they are, depend on God for their position in the position of authority that they're in. And so they ultimately are responsible to God for everything that they do in the legislature, in the Senate, uh, in the, even in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's necessary for them to understand who they're working for. And uh, uh, it's, so once they get that under control, then they would be able to operate, I think, better uh, for the rest of the nation, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if they once realize that they don't, they're not just there for their own gain, their own benefit, but they're there for God's glory. Yeah, as I watch what's going on, I get so frustrated because of the fact that they is that act a, is so, that a form of anger? so much like, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it could be. Uh, I get frustrated because they act so much like children on a playground and, and, um, the first thing I would I would like to tell them is to just grow up, and and learn to get along. My goodness, it's it's a mess, um, and without laying blame on on either party, um, they set the tone for the nation. They really do more than they think they do. Um, you know, when we watch um, our leaders, uh, we tend to follow their lead, and and. I mean, that's just the way life works. Mm -hmm. And so... Well, we have to remember that when you have two people competing, you're going to have each one try and say why they are better. And that's what well, we get. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. You know, no problem in a healthy way, but when you throw it into politics and you start throwing, you know, mud, then you're going to get... And, and their goal isn't really to unite in my opinion right now, to unite the country, it's to keep it divided because, well, this party needs to keep in power or this one. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat right now, it's both of them doing it. And so, you know, we as a people, I don't sit and ask the question, well, what would I would say to them? I, I do ask the question, well, what am I able to do? And if we really want to see our nation change, then what we need to do as Christian is to spread the gospel because the people ultimately rule the nation by who we vote in, the laws, all that different stuff that goes on. And so you want to change the nation, then change the people's heart. 
well, how do we do that with the area that God has given us? So my congregation, the community that I'm in, you know, speaking forth the truth and then fighting those battles that I can. Sure, I will do it at the polls. Um, I've actually, this last year, my wife owns a business and I've gotten to talk to um, Jim Jordan um, face to face. And I've gotten, yeah, um, he actually stopped in at my wife's store here in Lima when he was ran through. I represent in this area. Right. Yeah. And so when I have those opportunities, sure, I will speak truth to them and, and, and share my opinion of what's going on. Paul did this. Right. But in the New Testament, Paul did this. Right. And, and he, he used every Paul. And that's what people I get, I get frustrated at is, is, well, you know, how much should Christians be involved in politics as fully as you want to be? Because Paul, you know, he appealed to Caesar. Well, why? Because he had every right and every ability to. Like, it was his right as a Roman citizen. So we should use our rights as American citizens to do the things that we are or that we want to do and, and from a biblical standpoint. Do you think that God has strategically located some Christians to the ministry of politics to be close to, to be near Absolutely. the movers and shakers on Absolutely. Capitol Hill, in the White House? Mm -hmm in the um, Supreme Court? Yeah, without a doubt. And, and I believe also that, um, that we need to be, uh, I, I mean, there's no way that we can't be involved in politics because politics crosses over into what we need to believe as Christians so often that there's just no way to avoid it. Well, and let's face it, like this last year, the government force the church to, to do how we do ministry, right? Oh, yeah. And so we're only going to see more of that in the future, especially, I mean, we can see how end times can quickly unfold within just a matter of weeks, months, whatever it is, very quickly. I always have thought previously, well, it's going to be this progression of stuff because how do you get to, well, no, like fear is a powerful tool for people to use and the government can use it to, to come in and force you to do it. And um, whether it's the mark of the beast or something else. And so we got to be make sure that we are speaking truth and the gospel and, and all that. Well, you're, you're lightly touching on the mask issues, what you're doing, aren't you? Mask, vaccine, I mean, ultimately, you know, we Closures. know that. Sure. Right, but you're not going to be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. You were not able to buy or sell without a mask on earlier. Now we've got the push for the vaccine. Well, are you going to be buying or sell? And I'm not trying to say, hey, those are the marks of the beast. I'm not saying that. but. I'm just saying this gives us a hint into the future of, of what we're going to be addressed with from a biblical standpoint. And should Christians stand up? I mean, that's an individual base decision, in my opinion. It depends on where you're at, what you're called to do, and what the Lord has let you to do. Um, Anybody differ from that, what he just said? I would agree with it. I would just take it a step further and say whether we're in the marketplace, the church house, um, the political arena, our goal should ultimately be what Paul did every time he was in those different right. arenas, and that is to proclaim the gospel. The gospel is the answer. Yep. The government ultimately, and I would, back to your original question, what would I say to our three branches of government? You aren't the answer, and you don't hold the answer. The answer is <laughs> found in here. And, and so that, that should be business number one for us wherever we go. Yeah. Uh, so, that, so I would just concur with what you're saying, but say when we have these opportunities, share right. the gospel, share the truth. It's changed lives upon changed lives that will change nations and will change the world. Well, that brings up an interesting question then. How are we dis discipling our people? I mean, uh, do you have a group that goes out and evangelizes uh, either at the campus or anything or... You know, how, how are we doing that? Yeah, we're, we try and keep things local. Um, not try to, but that's what God has challenged us with right now. Sure. And so, yeah, we've, we've um, committed to um, different mileage radius from our church up to 10 miles. So, like, we have a food and clothing pantry that serves 10 miles. We have a benevolence that serves 5 miles. We have actually gone door-to-door -door up to 2-mile radius from our church and just simply prayed with people. Not invite them to church. We're not trying to, but we want to connect with them. So we give them a gift of some sort and we try and, and pray with them for their needs so that they know that we're there available to them. Why wouldn't you invite them? <clears throat> um, because I didn't want it to be a thing where it's a, you know, door to door we Jehovah witness this, or so to give more, you know, like, yeah, yeah, we're not trying. No, look, we're here to serve you. We're here yeah. to, to be a benefit to you. We love you so much that, listen, if you want to come, sure, we will give you all but the information. But not to make it seem like we, right. we're giving because we want you to come. Right. Our goal is just to connect, create a relationship, and let, let God kind of nurture that and then 
then we'll pull you one in. One man. So now we have invited lives. them in, in other areas, but on those events, we we did not. So just one more thing I'd like to add in here. Um, you know, it, it says here, how can I prevent myself from being angry? Was our original question, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and um, I, I say that this is an excellent opportunity for us to examine where we are in our relationship with Christ. Because if we find ourselves getting angry constantly or, or living in a state of anger, um, maybe that relationship's not all that it should be mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And so, so examine that and be honest with yourself when it comes to that so that, so that you can say, you know, I, I do, I need to do some changing. Um, that's what the Holy Scriptures are all about is change. Um, we were born sinners. We grow up sinners, and and we need salvation, and and that requires change. Do you gentlemen feel that each of you has a bully pulpit? They call it, but it certainly uh, we're free to be bold with the gospel, not bullies. But do you have a, a pulpit to 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 deal with this anger issue through your congregations at the local level? Is that what you feel is a part of your mission? given the anger that is being displayed in this country. Yeah, I don't know whether bully pulpit's right, the right terminology That's for it or saying. not, but, it, it, but not, a, not. A, a definitely an, an outlet to mm -hmm. be able to share. Mm -hmm. And I, I've shared my story with my congregation a lot of different times Excellent. and Excellent. In a lot of different ways. And just, I want them to know that God can change hearts. Right. Yeah. Um, and mine was one. We have the responsibility uh, to give our people perspective in this season, yeah. perspective from the scriptures, not perspective from social media or the news outlets. Well, and I'm not sure if you guys were like me, but when I stepped into the senior pastorate, um, I had been the associate pastor in, the, in my current church yeah. and, and went to senior pastor. So there are people that, you know, after being there for five years that you kind of have rough times. And I... For me, God changed my heart and actually allows me to love those people that, that there was tension. And I've shared that with our congregation. Mm -hmm. So even if there's anger with people, like I wish people could get that pastoral heart, at least from my angle, and just automatically love on people. So, All right, well, we're just about out of time. I think we're going to have to carry some of this discussion over to the next program. And we certainly have enough questions as well. Um, from you, our viewers, and we thank you for the questions that you've sent in and hope so that we have uh, ministered to some of you because there's, there's a lot to be angry about. We'll be back again <laughs> next week at the same time. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly life life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.